Attachment is a pretty complicated topic and it's not always easy to identify what attachment style you may have. You may have had over the years of your development a very emotionally detached, avoidant, and complex parent. And that in and of itself can lead you through a lot of traumatic experiences emotionally and psychologically. Attachment has a lot to do with how we function in our world. Some children are emotionally avoidant and detached specifically because of the kind of attachment they do or do not have with their parent. As you grow up over time, you become an adolescent, you become a young adult, you become a middle-aged adult, the, the attachment style of your childhood has an interesting way of creeping back up into your world and causing you challenges, causing you emotional, psychological distress, causing you more confusion, and maybe even causing PTSD. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about having two or more attachment styles and the impact that you are, are possibly experiencing in your world because of having a parent like this. But before we jump in, let me briefly introduce myself in case you are new. My name is Tamara. I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm also licensed in mental health. I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults who are dealing with trauma. Let's go ahead and jump in. I always say on this channel that my my certification, my qualifications, my specialization is trauma. And over the past 14 years of my career, I've become a little bit more of a, uh, if I could say a self-proclaimed expert in trauma therapy among families. Um, there's not a lot of research on the traumatic impact of attachment styles on families as a whole. Um, there's a lot of previous research on this topic, but we need some more modern information. So, you know, because of that lack of research and that lack of information about attachment styles in a family, a lot of people come into my office not knowing what's going on with them. It's not like they can get on Google and say a poor attachment style and trauma within a family. You know, they're gonna find some older research articles and I'm talking 2013, 2014, or way before 2013, you know? And so they come into my office with this, this, this confused mindset about who they are within their family, about what kind of behaviors their parents are displaying that has negatively, negatively affected them. I'm going to try to provide information on the kind of attachment styles that your parent, perhaps a narcissistic parent, is likely to display that can harm you in the long run. So first is secure attachment. Secure attachment is, you know, you are physically close to the individual who is your parent, who is raising you and caring for you and fulfilling your basic needs. This particular parent may be loving, warm, understanding, empathetic. They may also have the ability to feel your own emotions, right? Not in a toxic and an unhealthy way, like what would happen in a codependent relationship, but the parent is able to feel what's going on with his or her child. You know what I mean? So I think I said that right. So this kind of attachment style is healthy. You know, it has a foundation of love and compassion and empathy. Um, and that's a healthy attachment. It's a healthy bond. But there are also parents who have an anxious and avoidant attachment. An avoidant attachment basically says this, that I can't attach to you because I'm afraid. I don't want to get emotionally involved. I don't want to get psychologically involved. I'm not used to giving of myself to anyone. That could be fear, but it could also be narcissism. And so I'm focusing on both of those in this video, fear and narcissism. Now there's the anxious attachment style, right? That your parent may have, or even you. And that kind of attachment style, which I'm going to explain in a little bit here, is, you know, it's, it's almost like they show you love, but then they step back out of the situation, right? They show you compassion and then they're gone again, or they slowly come towards you and they, you know, engage in that relationship and then they back, 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 back out again. 
Um, and, and basically, here's why. Because they're afraid to get involved. And when you're fearful, there's just, you know, there's this underlying anxiety that impacts how you relate to other people. So what do these, these parents look like? The insecure and anxious parent. Let's jump into that. So the first thing that you're likely to see in these particular kind of parents is, you know, they don't give you what you need, right? They don't give in return. They take sometimes, but they don't give. And so this may be, um, let's say for example, you know, your parents growing up took all of your hugs, all of your kisses, all of your, you know, wonderful achievements and wonderful experiences. They took those and they deposited them within within themselves you know it's a part of their memory it's a part of their emotional experience but then when you go to that parent to get love empathy compassion security they back out right because again if they are insecure anxious they don't know how to manage relationships right an insecure attachment which i talk about right up here in my most recent video is you know this inability to be warm and empathic and compassionate and loving and if they are insecure and anxious, they're really not going to be warm, compassion, compassionate, empathetic, right? And giving because they are afraid. So, you know, you give and they take, and then they never really return that. There's no reciprocal interaction between you and this particular parent, okay? The next thing is that, you know, you may attempt to meet their expectations and you may you may actually meet those expectations, but here's, here's what the problem is. They are going to be anxious and they are going to be insecure. And so you may meet their expectations, but then they may try to push you a little further. They may try to push you a little bit further and a little bit further until you meet their expectations. And that can really make you feel burned out. It can make you feel unloved, right? It could, you know, really stir up this resentment within you towards your parent, okay? So, you know, this particular parent really does have some deep-seated needs that haven't been met. And unfortunately, they're displaying their unmet needs in the relationship with you. The next thing that you're likely to experience uh, with an, an insecure, anxious parent is that you may seek out their validation, but you are seeking it out with no success. We all need to be validated, right? When I do videos like this, um, you guys have told me behind the scenes, I feel validated. You're a great validator, somebody called me, you know? And so, you know, it's a human, natural, healthy need to feel that you need to be validated. And when your parent doesn't validate you over time, then it leaves you hanging out there on the ledge, you know, waiting for that parent to give you something that you're never going to get from them, you know? Why they don't validate you you know again it's that insecure i don't know how to engage in a healthy way in a relationship and then anxious part of them right i'm only gonna get but so close to you you know what i mean and so you know you may seek out validation of a relationship decision you may seek out validation of the colleges you want to go to you may seek out validations about the marriage that you are interested in 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 fixing or staying in right um, you may seek validation on where to live, where to raise your family, right? Who, which therapist to go see? Parents are supposed to, to support us in those ways. These particular parents, the insecure, anxious parents, just can't. They are not capable of giving you what you need. Now, the next group of parents would be the avoidant parent. And, you know, these avoidant parents can also be anxious avoidant as well. Now, you're likely to see that, you know, these particular parents are overly independent. They want to get the best of everything in terms of career and success, reputation right they may even be slightly narcissistic and so they're going to avoid anything that involves love attaching to you emotionally validating you and giving of themselves to you as their child right adult child as their adolescent or their kid they're going to avoid that because again they are avoidant and if they are anxious as well that's going to make it worse right so these particular parents tend to avoid intimacy with their children um closeness with their children and they tend to be overly independent they work all the time they're constantly looking for the next job opportunity they have 900 million things going all at the same time and it pushes you out of the way right 
And so a lot of times these kind of parents may be very socially engaging and they have a lot of friends, they have a lot of associates, but you as their child, you're going to be pushed over here because they're very avoidant of that emotional attachment with you. Now, you are also likely to feel that this particular parent is distant and emotionally detached because that's what it is, right? They are avoidant. These kind of parents may also have avoidant personality disorder, which I talk about right up here in this video if you want to go check that out as well. Um, I think you're also going to see in this parent difficulty experiencing and expressing emotions. They are not used to experiencing and expressing emotions in a way where there's this reciprocal emotional interaction. It's almost like they block that. And so you may get a parent who's really engaging verbally, cognitively engaging, right? And maybe even physically engaging. They're going to come where you are. They're going to go with you places. You know, if this is a child or an adolescent, they may take you to soccer practice, right? They do all those things. But the emotional piece of that, the, the reciprocal intimate interaction between you and your parent never happens. Again, they're overly independent. They're avoidant. And if they're anxious as well, that's a double whammy. Now, you're also likely to see that, you know, you may desire that close attachment and they may desire it in some way as well, but they are not affectionate. So you're probably not going to see that. They're avoidant, right? And there may be some fear here as well to attach to you as their child. So, you know... <laughs> You know, you may want this love from them and maybe they want to show it, but they just don't know how. I've heard over, you know, the many years of my career, um, learning from and developing with families that the, the father in the family system tends to be this kind of individual. They may desire love and you may desire love from your father, but they are incapable of giving you that, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that they don't love you. It just means I'm avoidant of what this love and bond and attachment may do. I'm anxious, I'm fearful. So I'm just gonna draw the line in the sand and say, here you go, here's some money, that's my love. Here you go, here's a college education, free of charge to you. That's my love. You know, I'm not going to kiss you and hug you. I'm not going to embrace you. I'm not going to cry with you. You know what I mean? I'm not going to talk about, you know, sappy emotions, but I will show you my love by buying you a $40,000 vehicle. You know what I mean? And so this tends to be the father in many family systems. Now, a mother can also be this way, but, you know, they may do it by baking cookies for your soccer team or volunteering as, you know, parent of the year. You know what I mean? So uh, these particular parents are just very avoidant. They're detached and they're fearful of engaging. Now, what is this likely to do to you? Well, let's look at this. So, you know, for you as the victim under an insecure, anxious, and anxious avoidant parent, you are likely to suffer from a personality disorder. Now, as a child, you need that connection. And when you don't have that connection, you're going to find it somewhere else, right? And you may also become What's the word I'm looking for? Codependent on other people for that emotional, you know, uh, reciprocal interaction that you didn't get with your family. You know what I mean? Or your parent, I should say. Um, and so you may become dependent, right? And that can slide into dependent personality disorder, right? Where you are constantly dependent. You can't navigate your world unless somebody else is helping you navigate it. You may also develop avoidant personality disorder where you avoid intimate relationships, you avoid social relationships, you avoid the things that are likely to help you socially and relationally because that's what you've been up under, right? For all those years growing up and that's the environmental influence. But personality disorders, as I always state on this channel, are also genetic. So you've got both of those pieces, you know? And so, you know, that can really cause some ups and downs in your life, some stormy relationships, you know and that can slide into borderline personality disorder where you are seeking validation your relationships are stormy uh, you're impulsive you know you've got suicidal thoughts and homicidal thoughts you might and you may also cut yourself or hurt yourself in some way these are 
you know, one set of consequences of having uh, a parent that has a poor attachment style to you. Now, the next thing that you are likely to experience could be two attachment styles. And somebody on my channel, here's the comment right here, asked, could you have two attachment styles? Absolutely you can. You could be fearful, uh, avoidant. You could be disorganized and anxious. You could be dismissive and avoidant, right? You could have a lot of different attachment styles, which co complicates the situation because yes, you're avoidant, but you're also anxious. And yes, you're anxious, but you're also fearful and disorganized. And so, you know, you can have two attachment styles, especially if you have a poor parental relationship as an adult with your parent or over time you experience so many roller coasters emotionally that you just developed two attachment styles. You could have a secure attachment with your parent and have a very fearful and anxious attachment with your boyfriend. You could have a secure attachment with your grandmother and have a very disorganized attachment with your father. So it can go like that as well. It's pretty complicated. I may, I may continue to educate you guys on this topic a little bit more on this channel as we move along. The next thing is, you know, you are likely to experience, um, I'm going to call it lay bile moods and affect. So, you know, affect is basically what clinicians regard as your, your face, right? How you come across. You may be very flat where you never smile. You look depressed all the time. You just look detached emotionally and psychologically. I'm sure you've seen people like that. You try to smile at them and they just look at you, you know, or their eye contact says I'm depressed or it says, I don't care to look at you today you know so that's affect how you come across uh, you know uh, with your face now labile mood is because of your insecure unhealthy attachment labile moods are like a roller coaster and so they're never one way you know what I mean so five minutes into your day you may be very irritable and then you switch to kind and then go back to irritable and then you're raging and then you're going back to calm and then you know and it's like a roller coaster you're also likely to deal with crippling anxiety to the point of of not being able to live your own life not being able to have a relationship that's healthy not being able to raise your children in a way that is okay because you're constantly crippled by anxiety that can turn into obsessive compulsive disorder where you obsess and you engage in a compulsion to to lower that anxiety so here's an example of that OCD germ OCD you know you may touch something and then you have to go wash your hands which is a compulsion to reduce the anxiety that you've touched something germy so OCD can develop Assess obsessive compulsive personality disorder can develop where everything has to be perfect everything has to be on your time everything has to meet your expectations so you can really develop you know a pretty crippling anxiety these are these are all complicated things guys and I'm gonna come back and discuss this you guys gave me a pretty good response uh, a couple days ago with my other video on attachment so I'm gonna keep this going I will actually see you guys next Sunday I'm not gonna post a video on Wednesday but I will post a video on Sunday and I'm gonna give you guys time to kind of engage this particular video um, let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below and if you are new go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button as well as that thumbs up button it really does help push the video up in YouTube and you get notifications every time I post something on YouTube. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.